Hey everyone, it's Pat and Pam, Twin Diggers, Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, in our last video, we were going to do a follow-up of the finds that we found yesterday at this site we're at, uh, that we've been given permission to. Um, it's 30 degrees and the wind is blustering, so we decided to do this piece in my garage. So <laughs> stay out of that wind. So I'm just going to go over some of the things that we found and uh, if you watch the other videos that we have posted today, um, you will see all of the other artifacts and old bottles and everything that we gathered today. And we also did some live digs, uh, which we've never really done before. So I will just start with going over our finds for today. We found these bottles here, as I mentioned in our previous video, these were completely filled with fine sand and so we took the a stick got all the sand out just put some warm water in it and shook it and this is how they came out to be absolutely pristine like they're brand new so these are some type of pharmacy bottle um, they all are cork top and honestly we don't we know that they're late 1800s early 1900s that's as far as we've gotten we haven't had a chance to look everything up. Another nice square bottle. It has that diamond shape on the bottom, and we do need to look into that to see um, who the bottle maker is for that. So there's a number five. There's a diamond in the middle with an H. It could be anchor hawking, but I'm not sure. This we tried to clean as best we could. Um, this is a really a cool bottle. We couldn't get the rest of the contents out, but look at all the paneling on the top. And look at the lid. It's almost like a two-plied lid on there. It looks like it's got a couple turtlenecks on it, doesn't it? Yeah. It's pretty cool. So again, some other type of, um, probably a medicine bottle. This was quite the find. Um, because it's cold right now, there's there's, it's fogging up because it's still a little wet inside. This is a one pint. I have not been able to find this on the internet, only a half pint. It's from late 1896 from what I can tell. And the name of it is, it's Isaac Wheel and Sons. And it is Minneapolis, Minnesota, where we live in the state of Minnesota. And it has two different addresses that are embossed on the bottle. So obviously it was some type of a whiskey or something, but uh, that was quite a find. Yeah, in beautiful condition. Yeah, Absolutely not a, beautiful. Full of sand. It has the triangle on the bottom, and it has a number, uh, if you can see it, 305. More pharmaceutical bottles. Uh, this one actually has the cork still in it. Uh, some people like to leave them in there. Um, and I have no idea how you would get that out without breaking that beautiful top. How clear that is. See mm -hmm. everything through it. It's beautiful. Another one. These are similar to the one on the end. I'm not sure what they were for, but it's the same exact markings. Um, this one is a cork top. This one's a little newer. It looks like this one's a screw top on here. So it had to have been something medicine. Again, it has that wide triangle on the bottom. Um, we'll look that up. We're not. This has a square on this one with a zero in the center. Um, and then another little cork screw top. Nice little clean bottle. So we have that. Pam found this. She dig, dug up this dish. And actually, these two pieces um, fit on there fine. So I am going to be gluing these back. And then there's no mark on the bottom. But I'm going to use this to put all the coins in it that I find. Um, it almost looks like it might Isn't be... Isn't pretty? Look at that design. I don't think it's a forget-me-not, but um, just real pretty. Mm -hmm. So I wish we knew the age of that. Just a real neat... We found a lot of stoneware had that gold gild in it. Thought we'd just bring a piece of it back. Looks like maybe there's some green on there. Yeah. Some green pattern Little or flower. something. Or, we yeah. haven't washed that you up yet. You can see, when you just turn that, you could see the gold gild on it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. 
This, can, this again, was filled with sand. It looks absolutely brand new. It's a real thick glass. It is a Sanford's, ink. and the number's 219 on the bottom. Sanford ink, which I collect, so yep, that's going to my collection. Ink bottles. These two jars here, we do not know what they are. Could be some fruit or something in them, but embossed on the bottom, it says Edwards. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look that up. And actually, my granddaughter's last name is Edwards, and guess what you're getting for Christmas, Jenny? Two Edwards bottles. This also with the panels around it. Uh, do not know what that would be for. There's a square on the bottom of the glass with a zero in it. So we'll have to look up what the bottle maker is on that. These uh, have not had a chance to clean up, obviously. More of similar to this. Mm -hmm. There's three of these with the screw top. Probably some type of pharmaceutical bottle. Pam found these, which are really exciting because two of these still have the turn wheel on them for uh, lanterns. We're thinking it could have been kerosene. Yeah, probably kerosene or oil. Well, this, probably kerosene because of the wick. Yeah, this one here has just real beautiful markings around it. I looked this up. You can see that in the sunlight. This is from the Plume, P-L-U-M-E and Atwood Company, and the patent number on it is 11688, and the date is 8-17-1897. That's beautiful. We found a lot of mason jar lids. They do not have ball on them, which I'm guessing are extremely old. They all look like this on the top. And unfortunately, we we didn't bring the glass because we had so They're much. All broken. Yeah, it, we all we found a lot of the broken glass that would have gone to these beautiful jars. What we had we found a, a seven and eight and a ten. Ten with the number on the bottom. And those of them. we took pictures of on our Facebook. Yeah. This was in really good shape. You can still see the seal that was in here, and this is a glass lid which I have jars and this will go perfect in my collection. It's so, in really nice oh, shape. Sticky there. Look at that. Yeah. Then we haven't washed you that know what a lot either. of people um, use those for coasters because if you turn them upside down oh, there's a lip sure. on them. Yeah. So repurpose. Just a uh, yeah repurposing if anybody's interested in that that's yeah. what they've been used for. We have a new follower on our uh, twin diggers um, YouTube and Facebook page. His name is Kirk, and we, he sent us stickers. And he is with Secret Creek Prospecting in Tacoma, Washington. He's in Tacoma, Washington. Um, when we find an axe head, he's very interested in them. And so we have been giving those to him. And uh, Kirk, we found this today. So don't know if this is something you'd be interested in. Uh, Give us a shout out and see if yeah something that you I'll can repair. I'll actually, Kirk, I'll, I took a picture of it. I'll send you an email, and if you want it, I'll ship both of them together for you. Yeah. Okay? Okay. And this was our creepiest find ever. This is the skull to a, oh, the teeth to, just teeth fell out, to a muskrat. And we actually didn't find it. A furry friend found it. Yep, there was a dog that was running around, and he pulled it out from the water side. Look at that thing. And the whole body was mummified and it was gross and he had the whole thing in his mouth. Yeah, so we like, I won't tell you what we did, but we got yeah. the skull. <laughs> we retrieved the skull. Look at those teeth. Yeah, and the, the mummified body that was on it, all of the whiskers from the muskrat were on there. Yeah, it, it was, was creepy. It was gross. Very creepy. So anyway, yep. kind of fun. We like that stuff. Yeah. Finding it. Right. So that's all we have. Again, this was just a small portion of it. Check out the other videos uh, from today. As you can see, uh, it was very cold. Uh, <laughs> we were dressed for it. We are in layers, uh, wool and polypropylene and everything. Um, so we've got Thanksgiving coming up. 
and our goal is to get back out on Sunday and that will probably be our final of the year and unless we get a big warm wave again or be or if we get like mixed rain snow and the ground freezes yeah because for right now the ground is not frozen yeah and that's why we've been able to dig it's very soft even yeah. though the, the temperature is cold right so but we had an incredible weekend and thank you sister Pam yay we found a lot of cool stuff all right all righty take care everyone and thank you for watching like and subscribe twin diggers minnesota youtube and check out our still photos on twin diggers minnesota facebook page thanks everyone take care have a great day all righty bye-bye